Okay. So as we said before, it is going to be very important in analyzing your matrices. And some of these matrices will be coming in the exam. They will definitely be coming. And uh, remember we said in analyzing matrices, you need to look at the axes. What, what are the axes saying? What is on the y-axis? What is on the x-axis? You need to be able to identify. So we know in the grand strategy matrix, for example, on the x-axis, we have competitive, right? Competitive position of the company, whether it has in a strong competitive position or in a weak competitive position. And on the y-axis, we have market growth, whether market growth is higher rapid market growth versus slow market growth, right? So the first thing you zero in on the axes that you are able to identify the axes and uh, you know where the company is positioned, and if it is in quadrant one, two, three, or four, you're able then, it actually tells you what strategies you have to utilize. So the point I'm making is that once you get, say for example, you get a grand strategy matrix in the exam, you don't know what quadrant the company will fall within. So in order to answer that, you will have to know all the integration strategies, correct? You will have to know all of the intensive strategies, integration and intensive strategies. You need to know your defensive strategies and your offensive strategies. In fact, the diversification strategies also, whether related diversification or unrelated. So you need to know all of your strategies. So that's the point I mentioned, learn all of these strategies and know these strategies as well. So that depending on what quadrant it falls within, you know then what choice of strategies you might think appropriate. And what did I say about choice? When you look at the axes, what kind of choices, what would help you to make a decision on the type of strategies that, that might be best for a company? What's that? Right, so what would help you to make the final choice? Suppose it's quadrant one, it's an easy one. Sorry? Not where it is on the quadrant. Right, the coordinates, right. It depends on the coordinates. And you can determine if it say the spot is in a particular spot. You can calculate whether it is 5 on the x and 6 on the y. So it depends on where the coordinates. So if it is high, in other words, if it is 6, if it is a point from 1 to 7 on both axes, if it is 6 on x, it tells you what, if the company is 6 on x, strong. right, strong competitively, and if it is 3 on y, what you say about the growth in market share, moderate, moderate right, and you're about 3, 4, 5, you can say moderate. So you need to determine then what could I recommend for a company that is really strong competitive and the market, it is moderate market growth. Right. What could you recommend? Maybe market, well, only market development. It could be market development. Okay, it could be, it could be any choice. I mean, because the company is doing pretty well. Right? You just need to argue and justify. You know, the company is doing well. You just, so all the company needs is to sustain and try to increase its position. You're sustaining because you're almost at the top of being um, in the market in terms of competitiveness. So you just need to sustain your position, right? So if I'm really doing well, as you say, market development means I'm now looking beyond this existing market, which is a good choice. What else you could look for when I'm really, I'm in the, I'm in the market and I'm, I'm really one of the top players? What else I might want to do if I'm already a top player? Sorry? Possibly, I can look for somebody to take over. And what could help you to make that choice? What tools can help you to make that choice about who you can take over? The CPM. CPM can help you make that choice. Right, so you can recommend a competitive profile matrix analysis of some key competitors that are likely to be the ones to buy out. What else could I focus on as a strategy? 
I'm already a, a, a key player. What else? Just see anything? Hmm? The I can divert for what kind? Related, unrelated. But I'm already dominating the market, and there's six instead of scale of seven. Unrelated. I'm going to take some risk. But why related when I already dominating the market? I'm going unrelated. I'm looking for some fresh things. You see the point I'm making? I'm already a key. I am dominating in this market. I am strong competitively. So you don't play safe necessarily unless the market is in a mature stage and dying. But I you know I'm looking now to pioneer. I'm looking to diversify in unrelated areas. I am diversifying. If you know your financial management, I'm diversifying my portfolio now. Right, what about the product? What would I want to do? Anything with my product? Product development. I want to look at some new and fresh products to put on the market. You understand what I'm saying? Because if I'm, if I'm in that good position financially also, I want to start to invest in developing new products, exploring new markets. Because I'm not going to be in this position forever. Right? I'm, going to con I'm going to take control. I'm going to my cash cows, I'm going to consolidate and maintain you know, my position with certain products, but I want to bring fresh new things on the market, you see. Um, so there are various choices. I just want to be able to argue and justify why you would make particular choices, you see, which might be rationalizing. Right? So if, which is different to a company though that is one, suppose the company was one on axis X, and one, right, or let me change the note, one on X, and six on y, right? One on x and six on y. What would you do there? One on x and six on y. Joint that could be joint venture. You see, because I'm not as competitive, you see, I'm not as competitive. I'm at one. So I need to do things now. I might need to talk about how can I increase my market share, maybe trying to penetrate the market more and things like that. But I'm only one. Versus the company that would be minus one. If it is minus one on the x-axis, or minus three on the x-axis, I'm positive six. So the market is still in growth, but I'm not that competitive. So what strategies do I need to, to put in place to become more competitive? Right? So as I said, students can take so many different arguments, just bring logical arguments like you did just now. If I know I'm not as competitive, what do I need to do to become more competitive? And the IE matrix is made up of, IE matrix embodies the IEFE and the EFE joined together. And again, it prescribes the type of strategies that you can utilize that you need to know, depending on um, whether to hold or maintain or, or the other prescribed strategies for the IE. And, um, and uh, then in implementation, the Implementation now is, as I said, this, the, the most practical stage in strategic management that a strategy is as good as implementation is what is said. You could have all the excellent strategies. So implementation is a very broad concept that embraces, as we said in the last lecture, um, the, the allocation of resources and what other things will come up be relevant in implementation. Let's hear you. What other things are relevant in implementation? Sorry? Training staff. What else? Motivating staff. What else? What does implementation involve? What is implementation all about? Sorry? How? That is how to. Right. Conflict culture is an issue. Merging, that is, right, clashing cultures or trying to merge cultures. How you use and allocate resources. What are the resources you use and allocate in implementation? Sorry? Human resources, physical resources. Technological resources, physical resources, 
financial resources. So it's all of these resources that are actually utilized and allocated across the institution. Which is the most challenging resource you have to deal with? The human resource, right? And that is where all of your OB comes into play, all of your HR, the point of culture. What other issues once you're talking about human beings would be important in implementation? Performance, incentives, change management, facilitating change. Implementation, somebody said change. Leadership, management, sorry? Planning, but we're talking about people, the main people issue. Training, have we mentioned that before? Rewards and recognition, motivation. Sorry, recruitment and selection, correct? Recruitment and selection. Internally also, promotion, placing people in the right jobs at the right time. All right. So how, what the key thing be, be, um, related to employees and the company gaining competitive advantage? You mentioned it before. Competencies, how do you get your employees, which links into the development, function, coaching, mentoring, training, how do you get your employees to become competent and distinctively competent, possessing tacit knowledge? That's the ultimate goal of implementation. Because people drive organizations and people who buy goods and services keep organizations going, not the technology. So you'd find, for me, one of the most critical things about implementation is the people component the human resource component, you know, managing human resources. So in the Caribbean environment, what are some of the unique challenges you might find in the workplace in the Caribbean environment, whether Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Antigua, Grenada? What are some of the major challenges you would find in a Caribbean context, dealing with human people in organizations? Sorry? Communication. How is communication normally here? Well, not language necessarily, but you say communication. What's the one of the biggest problems you find in communication? <laughs> right, top down communication. Right, not communication. Or top down communication is just coming one way. So one way communication is generally a problem. People might misinterpret messages, misunderstand the messages. Right, any other things in the Caribbean context? Training, is it competence is a problem? Some people not well trained. Trade unions, are trade unions an issue? Aggressive trade unions. Trade unions trying to fight for the workers to get higher wages. You trying to control costs, trade unions trying to push up wages for the betterment of the workers, you see. So you always have those competing, those competing interests. So I suggest you spend some time looking at issues of implementation and how implementation is important to organizations, um, helping them to achieve their objective and the challenges of trying to implement a strategy. Um, as you said before, clashing cultures. If an organization actually buys out a competitor, you're talking about clashing cultures. Or if an organization goes in a new in market development, what are the challenges of market development if a company chose a market development strategy? What's the challenge? Sorry? Well, but we already made a decision. I'm not going to make a decision to go unless I'm comfortable with the market is in growth. So, so once you've made that decision, so I'm talking about from an implementation point of view, not strategy, once we make a decision for market development, it, the assumption is it is a growth market. But I'm looking at it from an implementation point of view. What are the implementation issues once I have gone in a new market? Labor, what, what about labor? Right, traditions of the company. If you have workers from your parent company going there initially to set up systems, right, which is the cultural differences that might come up. You remember the videos we looked at with McDonald's, etc. What other issues would come into play? I've gone in a new environment. Culture, traditions, what else? Hmm? Technology? What about the technology? If you're using new equipment, but what is involved if there's new technology or equipment? So right, training. Training and retraining. People need to be trained and retrained. Right. 
right? Standards, right? How can you transfer your standards, looking at different work norms, different work cultures, work ethic, the work ethic could be different, right? Sorry? Right, government policies, maybe taxation. Would the taxation policies benefit the workers? Right? What are the tax rates? So these are a lot of issues that you would have to consider. You know, um, suppose you went to a, a, um, a Muslim country. You dress, how you dress, how you socialize. So there are also social dimensions when you go in another jurisdiction. Could, um, language barriers too. It could be a language barrier depending on where you've gone. Right? My country might be speaking a different language, so it could be a language barrier. We already touched on the competitive advantage through people, so we don't need to go over that again. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, as we said before, we started at a point um, back in September, early September, and we said that I told you the course is not a linear course. In other words, it doesn't move from step one to step two in a linear fashion. It's really multidimensional, looking at linkages and pulling in thing concepts from different points of view. So in going into your exam, similar thinking would occur where no matter what question you're doing, it's going to call for you to pull in knowledge from different areas of the course, different concepts, and integrating them. And your understanding of concepts it's going to be critical, not your learning by rote. Right? You can learn by rote and memorize some things, but it doesn't mean you understand it. So the critical part of this course that differs from others, you need to understand the concepts. And in fact, when you understand the concepts, you, you, you can see then how easy it, it is. It's not as complex and difficult as you think. So I'm sure the students who have a generally good understanding of the concepts, who have learned them at this point, you feel quite comfortable and as they said, the course is not a difficult course. It's not, a, it's not that complex, you know, that you have to have this genius intelligence to understand it. I think once you have basic understanding of the concepts and you were doing your work and you were, into, and you were practicing the interrelations and the discussions, um, I'm sure at this point you're feeling a lot more comfortable um, in preparing for your exam. What I would urge you to do is to continue your discussion. You know, continue what we're doing here, talking among yourselves with your small groups, um, um, looking at linkages. You can start to look at linkages, value chain and its linkages, the different matrices, matrices and the linkages, and have discussions about possible ways, you know, practice analyzing uh, matrices and coming up with recommendations. And, and the more you talk and discuss strategy at this point, I think you're better preparing yourself for the exam, right? But just reading notes on, uh, uh, in individually and trying to memorize notes might not be the best way to prepare for the exam. Interactive discussions and talking about it, even if you have a 10 or 15 minute discussion, would be much more powerful than just reading. Now, if at this point you're still struggling with a lot of the basic concepts here at the beginning, person analysis and five forces and RBV and business model, and the competitive strategies, if you're still struggling with those concepts or um, issues of the, the components of the RBV and issues of distinctive competencies and tacit knowledge, if, you're bad, if those concepts are foreign to you, you know, you're really in a state of trouble right now. But those concepts should not be strange concepts. Those should be you should be comfortable, even if not knowing them perfectly, you should be able, if I say the importance of distinctive competencies and tacit knowledge, the average student at this point, should be able to appreciate, yes, that's linked, it's linked to the RBV, and you know why it's linked to the RBV. At this point, the average student should understand that. And again, at this point, the average student should know when they talk about the value chain, you should know that once you say it, inbound logistics and the importance of inbound logistics to five forces, you should be comfortable with that link where it talks about bargaining power of the supplier. Right? And at the at distribution of bone logistics, we're talking about the importance of forward integration, um, looking at bargaining power of buyers, et cetera. You should be able to draw those linkages. Um, the reason why might a company forward uh, horizontally integrate bio to competitor, you should be able to have a basic understanding why a company might want to do these things, right? Um, and the components of value chain you should be quite generally comfortable since I said the value chain is a very important concept in this 
course. And the business model, again, at this point, the average student should know the components of a business model, right? Uh, managing costs. See, at this point, you should know that basic concept of the business model. And when it comes to like the CPM, the average student by this point should know the importance of the weight and that the weight looks that important. Right? At least those basic concepts you should know at this point. So if you're still struggling with those concepts at this point, you really, really still got a lot, a lot of work to do, I mean, a substantial amount of work to do um, to catch up. Right. So today, as I said, is our last session. <clears throat> um, I will leave it for you for the tutorials then. We'll have our last set of tutorials today, but if any group wanted me to come back next week to do any finishing up tutorials, I leave it to you. But today we'll finish, uh, we'll finish up all of our tutorials today. And um, I would, we'll then determine a tutorial if you need any assistance. Uh, if any students again wanted to meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, I normally set aside Tuesday afternoon, as I said before, if you wanted to meet with me one-on-one -on -one for any issues that you had. So I still leave that space open in Tuesday afternoon that we can, if you wanted to meet with me, they can help you in any areas where you're having any difficulties, right? So, so for the people who are working, right, if, you, if you wanted to meet with me, I, I can make availability in the evening still, you know, after hours. So if there's any working people who wanted to meet with me in any evening, I can make myself available that we can also have an evening meeting you know, you come to my office and you can have some one-on-one -on -one sessions to help you to get yourself started up, right? So I, I wish you the best. I don't believe in luck. I wish you the best. You still have a lot of time, just over three weeks you have that you can continue to prepare for the exam. So I wish you the best. And I have no doubt that, you know, majority of students will continue to do very well in the course. And uh, so I urge you to just do some steady, you know, Steady reading, and but more so the interactive discussions, and we give you samples of the exam paper. So, well, I uploaded the video, but some colleagues were telling me that the video where we looked at that sample paper isn't showing, so I'll, I'll, I'll upload it again. I'll just upload it again. I don't know what happened, but I'll just um, upload it again when I go back in the office around lunchtime. If not today, but tomorrow morning for sure. Right? So. Now, there's a change that was made to one of the tutorials. I think it's one of the tutorials, the tutorials where the AC wasn't working. I think that is in the afternoon session. Um, but I will let you, I was trying to remember the room, but it's one of my tutorials today where there is a problem. I think that was TSR 7. I think it was TSR 7, but one that didn't have an AC, we got it shifted. Um, so, in fact, for what I'll do, I'll just make a call to the office and let you know where that change is, huh? um, so that you would not go to the room. In fact, no, hold on. I think, just give me a sec. I think I just got it. Just hold a sec. <clears throat> 